And welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. And I am Eric Stroman. And uh, we'd love to help you figure out ways to improve your home and improve your life. And that just might mean that here it is, the heat of the summer. Yeah. And you want your garden to look great. And it's in, challenging right it's now. It's challenging. It's August. Because it's hot. Yeah. And, you know, it's parched in a lot of places. And so I thought we'd walk you through some things, some tasks to do. You know, especially when yeah, you don't it's just hot. have to give up and let it go. No, no, no. There's some things you got to no. do. Do you have a soaker hose? I do. You do. And I use that around a tree. Good, good. You know the trick, though. You, well, yeah. And you, let's let's. No, tell. you know, you tell the initial well, trick. Well, I mean, listen, a a tree is like an iceberg if you think about it, and the canopy, in other words, the circumference of the tree canopy that the you umbrella. see above the uh-huh. umbrella part. The furthest point out is where you want to water. That's where you want the water to go. And that's where the roots are. That's where the roots are. They've reached out equal distance to the top canopy under the ground. That's why roots spread and your sidewalks come up. They're growing underneath the ground as well. So don't just think you you put the hose at the base of the tree. That's not where the roots are. And also the trunk... (laughs) <laughs> a little emphatic, you know, a little crazy about so the tree. So if you get one of these soaker hoses, yeah. you want to position, and the soaker hose, by the way, is often a black hose that has teeny tiny little pin needle holes, a gazillion of them, and then it has a little fastener at the end so the water doesn't come out like a hose would. Right. And it, so it just stops and just kind of keeps spraying out very subtly. But you want to make sure, like Eric says, to position uh, the soaker hose around the so it's in alignment of where the furthest part of the branches and the fluffy part of the tree, the canopy, yeah. hang. But then make sure, too, that it's not blasting so much nope. that it's getting the just, trunk. It's just you a don't want the slow, trunk. You don't want slow the tr- drip. You don't want the trunk to get wet, especially citrus trees and oak trees. They don't want to get their trunk wet. No, they don't. It's not, it's well, gonna make I them, don't want my trunk wet. I know. It's not Same a happy, deal. like they're standing in water. It's like, really? I'm wet. Give me a towel, please. That's right. So you want to make sure that as you're thinking in this summertime garden analysis that you get that great soaker. It's going to cost you what? Maybe 15, 20 bucks? At the most. It's, and it's such a good investment. It's and helpful. You, just, you put that there around each tree for maybe like an hour, maybe two hours tops, and Real it's going to give it a easy. deep, deep soaking. And you want to make sure, by the way, to test it, that the soil should be moist three to four inches deep. See, now that boy, in some climates, it it just seems like it's not a possible yeah, ability at I all. I know. I know. So... If you have drought-resistant plants, by the way, you know, you won't have to water as often, but the principle of deep watering still applies. I mean, so often you see people around, especially in the summertime, standing outside in their shorts or their bathing suit. Watering in the wrong Holding place. the hose, yeah. just kind of for a few minutes and then moving to the next. And so it's... Usually with a beer helmet. And it's just wasting water because it's not helping the, the plant. No. And... They're not doing it right. Also... This, those are probably the same folks that have the sprinklers trained exactly on the street and the sidewalk and the concrete. Pay attention to where your your watering is going. Make sure it's not just going on the cement. Make sure it's going on the grass or the plants that you're watering. And watch out for that it's not hitting the house mm-hmm. or, or degrading some because fencing because you get dry rot, terrible. termites. Yeah. End of the story. Now, also make sure that if you have hanging baskets and container uh, garden plants, yeah. you're going to need to water Probably every day in this heat. Oh boy, the they hot dry water. out so fast. But Especially the, key, the coconut husks. Yes. You know, it dries them out so quickly. And so maybe take a look at if you have mulch on top of them yeah. to keep the water trapped inside because that air, especially if you have a nice big basket, the air is coming in. I don't and know it's about just, you, but my basket's gone. Is it really? Yeah, gone. It's gone, as in like, I mean, just shriveled the up the flowers. To nothing. Well, that's okay. I mean, and it's I think, summertime. I think it was the coconut husk. I think that yeah. that doesn't hold water effectively. So next time, put a little barrier inside. Yeah. Maybe some of that landscape fabric. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it traps it in a little bit more. Maybe even just a pot. A it's pot. It's going to hold the moisture yeah. in a little yeah. more effectively. Or even a plastic liner. I've yeah. seen that done. So it's like it's in its own little vessel. Just You want it to have drainage. You do. But but that, yeah, I think yeah, that the coconut but, but, has... But, you know, if you don't, it just, like Cindy's like a point, if you, if you don't water every day, boy, that's just, it's just going to dry. And you want to put your finger in the container, and it should be it should be moist at least two inches down. Yeah. So, you know, we've got to make sure that happens. I and came back from vacation. They were just gone. See? Yeah. Yeah. So this might be a time to, if you do have containers and baskets, to move them into more shady areas closer to the house. Yeah. That's what yeah. happened to my tomatoes. I didn't cover them. Yeah. They, the sun just started beating on them late, late August. Goodbye. I know. They're, they're all yellow and oh. dried out and stuff. Yeah. How about if you have perennials, annuals, and bulbs? Take a few moments. Take the dead flowers off 
you know, and the spent flowers and a little time, you know, grooming the plants will really make a big difference in how your garden looks. But then by removing the, the spent flowers, the plants will not go into the seed producing stage. So guess what? That means it'll continue to flower longer now. Oh. So you're forced. So don't don't let those those spent flowers. I mean, if you get lazy and you leave the dead flowers on there, mm-hmm. guess what's going to do? It's thinking, okay, the season's done, game over. I'm oh, now going to. I'm not going to give you any more flowers. Yeah. So keep pruning. It's like washing your hair and fluffing it up. You're going to keep. Pr- no, taking the de- you're going to deadhead. Right. You're going to keep deadheading yeah, okay. that because now you're going to stretch your flower season a little bit more close to the fall. Good idea. It's kind of a trick. It's easy to do. just takes a little discipline, you know. And by the way, container-grown perennials and shrubs and trees can be planted this month. You know, always take time to properly prepare the soil and so forth. And there's certain kind of fall-blooming things like crocus. That's a great flower. You can plant that right now. Oh, okay. You can give an extra week or two. I like the crocus. I like the crocus, too. And the spring-flowering perennials that can be divided and transplanted this month or next, be sure to do this during the coolest part of the day, and then water the plants thoroughly after you transplant them. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Because they're in a little bit of shock. They they need the extra water. Yeah. You have roses. We have roses. Uh You can prune your hybrid roses right now to promote fall blossoms. You're kidding. Yeah. Mine are going again, believe it or not. I know. They're going. So remove about a third of the vigorous growth, any any stems that kind of cross, you know, each other should be removed, as well as if there's like, if they're in that center of the the plant and then any kind of weak spindling, spindling kind of canes that are damaged from maybe black fungus that you might have. Sure. All that's a good idea. As for your shrubs and trees, you know, this is a good time. Summertime blooming shrubs can be pruned for shape right now. So see, there's things you can do yeah, yeah. right now, even I though I think it's... everybody has the idea that you just go inside, put the air conditioner you know? on, don't even pay attention. <laughs> and now back to your tomatoes and any yeah. other fruits and veggies that you have. This is actually the time to start planning to pretty soon plant fall and winter vegetables. You love soups? I do. You love things like that? Maybe even you can plant some starters or seeds like green onions or carrots Boy, I wouldn't mind some Or beets and lettuce. I love the beets. Right? Maybe even spinach, spinach and and radish. Yeah. Any of those things, they can go directly into the garden, you know, right now and early even next month. And lawn care. All right. So contrary to popular belief, a brown lawn isn't necessarily a dead lawn. No. Grasses go dormant in times of drought. And we've been having a drought in a lot of places. But guess what? It will quickly return to life. With a fall rain. Right about October, show it'll show up again. So if a lush lawn is important to you and you don't mind mowing and water it regularly deeply, if the water shortage is expected, you hate tending to the grass, you may choose to let your lawn go dormant, you know, give it a break, and then wait till the fall. You get what I'm saying? And then, or you could even try some of the more drought-tolerant grasses sure. that, that are out there. And then house plants. Guess what? What? Not to rub in that Christmas is only um, how many Saturdays from now? We 15. said about 15 or so. That's not right. This Later this month is a good time that poinsettias and Christmas cactus, if you have that Chestnuts outside. Chestnuts <laughs> roasting on an open fire. Love it. Never Thank too you. soon. You can bring those back inside right now, okay? Because guess what? Then you'll, you'll kind of You're supercharge them for, them the, for the winter. For Christmas flowering, oh, because we love boy. the Christmas cactus that bursts right around that time. Yes, it does. Yeah. So all those things you can do right now. At this in the heat Jack of Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Thank you for all that. 15 Saturdays away. Yeah. You and I will be in Christmas sweaters. <laughs> we'll put all this Can't on wait. the website. <laughs> Eric Strower, Cindy Dole. Hope this is helping you to feel inspired to do things to make the spaces you go home a little more beautiful, a little more relaxed. Go to our website, yourhomewizards.com. Check out our first video yeah, in our chef competition, Chef Lalo. Yourhomewizards.com, Chef Challenge. And until next time, the key is under the mat. Bye-bye. While you place the flowers in the vase that you bought